today, let's walk through some troubleshooting tips so you get the perfect scrunchie every time. Welcome I do sewing and DIY related content and today's video is all because of you. So all of your comments and questions about scrunchies, we are doing a scrunchie troubleshooting guide. So the first step in this is we are talking about sizing. So scrunchies can come in a whole lot of different sizes. The wider your fabric, the bigger your scrunchie is going to look, as well as the longer your fabric, the more full your scrunchie is going to look. So if you really wanna make a small scrunchie for let's say a toddler, you are going to make that on the shorter side and probably not as wide versus if you wanna make an extra big scrunchie, that is going to be a lot wider and a lot longer. So you can see here that I have seven different scrunchies, all different size fabrics and the fabric changes will allow your scrunchie to be a different size and shape depending on what you need. In addition, the amount of elastic you use will also change how full or not as full your scrunchie ends up looking. So if you want a scrunchie that's more for the size of maybe like a kid, you may want to use around six inches versus a normal size scrunchie would be around seven or eight inches depending on how you want to use it. Once you have that sizing figured out, it's now time to sew that main seam. So one of the biggest questions that I get about this is how do I keep my seam straight? So as you can see, I have some fabric cut out here with that white seam and it is crooked. So two main reasons that this is probably happening. The first could be that your seam allowance unfortunately is just not sewing on a straight line or your fabric actually is crooked itself. So you're following the edge of the fabric for your seam allowance. So your seam allowance is on a straight line but your fabric wasn't cut correctly, so you're ending up getting this crooked seam as well. So there's a couple different reasons why this matters for us. And the first is that when we start to bring these together for our next step, it's gonna be very difficult to bring the edges of our fabric together. So we really wanna make sure that the seam is nice and straight from the beginning, and we aren't gonna have any issues in the future. So if this happens to you, my biggest piece of advice, unfortunately, is you're just gonna start over with a new piece of fabric. So once you have your fabric cut out, you can then take a ruler to make sure that you're cutting it out correctly so that you do have a nice clean rectangle and that all the edges are straight. Now, in addition, what you can do is you can actually take a ruler and mark out where your seam is going to be going. This is gonna give you a really easy guide so you can make sure that your seam allowance is nice and even all the way through. And you can make sure that at the end, you're gonna get that seam exactly how you want it, being sure that you're leaving both that edge on the beginning and end so that you'll be able to bring these edges together. Now let's say you finish that first seam and now it's time to turn the scrunchie. So this can actually be a little difficult, especially if you do use a thinner scrunchie. So my biggest tip for this is to use a safety pin. So put your safety pin on one of the edges and then just push the safety pin through that scrunchie tube. You could also use a turning tool for this if you would like. I just find safety pins are a lot easier and I always have them on hand. The safety pin will then allow you to pull this through and you'll have a perfectly turned scrunchie. So now your scrunchie is turned all right side out and it's time to bring those short edges together. So for this, we are bringing the short edges of our scrunchie tube together with right sides together. And I feel like the biggest problem, I know I've run into it a lot and I've seen it in some of the reviews, is that we sewed up the scrunchie tube a little bit too much. So you don't have enough fabric to combine them, to pin them together. And now the easiest way to resolve this is with your handy seam ripper. So you're just gonna take your seam ripper and very, very carefully take out a few seams. So for this, you just wanna get it so that you have that inch of fabric left over. And now the big thing when we're doing this and when you're pinning it together is you wanna be sure that you're being very careful with the fabric now. That seam is much more gentle since we have taken out the back stitching. So we just wanna go through and very carefully pin these up with right sides together using our hands to smooth this out so that we get this really nice sort of flat curve that we're then able to take the seam on. And when we go to closing up our scrunchie, we can talk about a few ways to reinforce that seam. So now sewing that curve down. So for this, I know that this can also be a tricky step, especially since we don't have a lot of fabric to work with. We're on a tight curve and sometimes the sewing machines just don't wanna go through the pin. So my biggest tip for this is to smooth it out with your fingers as you go. So you can see I have everything in place. My fingers are kind of smoothing this down. And then when I start sewing, I'm gonna take the first pin out and if you have any issues where your sewing machine's just not working with the pins that you used, feel free to take those out as long as your fabric is still staying nice and smooth. Now I do stop and start a lot while I'm sewing this. So you can see here that I'm stopping, kind of readjusting the fabric and then starting to sew again. Another option for this is if you really struggle, you can take the presser foot up and readjust your fabric and then put the presser foot back down. 
This is going to give you a way to make sure that your fabric is staying smooth, you're not getting any ripples underneath of it, and you'll be able to get a really nice and clean seam as you're sewing it all the way through. This step really is just all about patience and going nice and slow to make sure that you're getting that clean seam. Once we have that done, it's now time to sew in the elastic. Now sewing the elastic can be a little challenging. One way to solve this is to use a walking foot. So a walking foot is going to give you motion and push from both the top and the bottom thanks to the way it is set up. And this is gonna make it so much easier to sew in your elastic. I will agree though that a walking foot is kind of heavy. It is a lot and not everybody has one on hand. So there are other ways we can do this. The first is as you can see, I'm actually taking a slightly bigger seam allowance with this and I have some elastic on both the left and the right of the presser foot. This is gonna give more traction to my sewing machine and I'm able to sew through that elastic a little bit easier. So definitely recommend this if you are struggling just so that you can have some elastic on either sides. Some other options are you could use a knit foot and if you are using thinner elastic, you may just be able to sew directly through without any issues. It really is kind of trial and error with elastic. Now for finishing up our scrunchie. So you have that little opening, you have the elastic in, and it's time to sew this up. So you can use your machine and just take a very, very narrow top stitch over where that hole is that we put our elastic into. This can be a really great method if you are sewing these really quickly and need to do a lot, as it is very fast, very easy, and you get a really nice and secure stitch. My preferred way though is to hand sew this closed. I love hand sewing it as one, it allows you to really reinforce your seam. So especially if you had to take any of that seam out earlier because the fabric wasn't lining up correctly, this gives you a way to really add some more reinforcement, do some knotting if needed, and then you can go through and just take that seam as you normally would with your needle and thread. I also like how this gives you that invisible stitch. So I'm able to go through, put my needle into one side of the scrunchie, sew it up and then I do the same on the other side and this gives you a really neat and clean way to make sure that you don't actually see any of that stitching happening so it makes it look like an invisible stitch and this is just a really fun way to finish up the scrunchies. Of course with these if you are hand stitching be sure you're knotting at the beginning and end whether you needed to reinforce your stitch or not this will just give you the most secure scrunchie that you can. Now we have gone over a lot of tips today in this video and the best part is these are all available now with the scrunchie pattern available in my Etsy store as all scrunchie patterns now come with a troubleshooting guide. If you bought the scrunchie pattern originally and didn't get the troubleshooting guide, feel free to message and send me an email and I'll send it to you for free. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what other questions you have and I'll see you next time.